Well, good morning, YouTube. Arizona RE here. And uh, I'm standing by over here at Rieto Park at the construction of the new stables. Actually, they brought some of the old stables over and they're constructing new ones. Uh, the Rieto Downs Horse Racing Park. Uh, they've decided to go ahead and make this a, a genuine horse track again and uh, they're working on it. So I'm over here at this construction site because I have a dual vlog planned with Bad Bonneville. So stick around and uh, welcome Bad Bonneville to the uh, to the Arizona RE family. Dude, what are you doing? Hello. Hello. Hey, is this Bad Bonneville? <laughs> yeah, it is. Is this uh, Arizona RE? Arizona RE. You bet your ass it is. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Cool, dude. What are you up to? Uh, right now, I'm out at uh, out an old horse racing track. I was uh, filming something for an upcoming series on my channel called Tucson Oddities. And you'll never guess what I'm doing now in the spirit of Bad Bonneville. Oh, no. Are you in the oh, dirt? Yeah. You're in the dirt. Oh, hell no. My wife would kill me if I did that to her bike. <laughs> oh, shit. No, I'm riding down a pedestrian trail. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. That's what I there like go. to hear. Uh, I'll try not to hit my head on these overhanging trees here. <laughs> Do you ever encounter, like, this pedestrians, like bike riders and joggers and stuff? Uh, in this particular stretch, no. But it's right next to a dry riverbed that has a whole... Uh, bicycle pedestrian trail here all right here we go i'm in the dirt a little bit all right i'm out of the dirt oh <laughs> <laughs> right okay on. so where are you at right now i'm over by encinitas which is right on the beach i'm like pretty close to the beach oh yeah yeah ladies and gentlemen I promised and I have delivered on the phone with me in the helmet doing a long distance dual vlog. We have Bad Bonneville. Say hi, brother. Hey, you guys, it's Bad Bonneville. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have heard me shout out to uh, Bad Bonneville before on my channel. And uh, if you guys haven't seen his stuff, you should go look at it. The dude does some amazing stuff with his little Bonneville. And that's why I'm on my Bonneville today, or I should say my wife's. Uh, I keep it my wife's. That way I'm able to keep it in the garage. If I had three bikes to myself, I might have to give one up. <laughs> but, but old bad Bonneville here, he does, uh, he does more stuff with his little uh, T100 Bonneville than you see most guys do with their dirt bikes and stuff like that. So hats off to you, brother, because uh, these bikes aren't light in the dirt. <laughs> I try anyways. Woo! Man, it's so nice out here. Yeah, it, it finally got that way here in Tucson too, man. It's uh, It just got up to about 50 degrees right before you called. Man, I was looking at the map and I saw all sorts of Doppler all over your area. All right, I'm getting ready to head up my favorite road. Heck yeah, man. I got this pretty good road right up here. There's like little houses on it really close to it. You'll see in a sec. You know what? So tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. So it, you're, you're probably kind of a small guy, huh? Because it, you're standing up on that bike and, and I don't think you put uh, uh, bar risers or anything on it because if I stand up on this bike, I'm my head's pretty much over the light bucket because of how, how small the bike is for me. I'm right at six foot. Well, I do have the T100, so like the front wheel's a little bigger, which helps, I oh, want to okay. say. I don't know, I think it's the it's a 19 inch wheel, so it might help. The 17 inch wheel ones have a little lower kind of stance, I think. My buddy's got one, so that's where I'm getting that from. Uh, yeah, they do, they do. They have, uh, they're a little bit, they're a little bit shorter. Cause, uh, but I just noticed that you're able to stand up on the pegs and really manipulate that bike a lot. And, yeah, and I need I mean, something just a little I, bit taller to do that. I'm 5'10", so I'm not like short nor, but like I'm not tall. I'm pretty average, I guess. Oh, you know what? Hold on, dude. I got to do something in my fashion right now. Oh, can I get through here? 
I don't even uh -oh. know. This lady's checking me out on this beach cruiser. She doesn't even know what I'm doing. Hi. <laughs> Um, I just I just love that. Am I gonna get through here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I mean I've got these big bars. I have these bars are called the Norman Hyde Western bars. And they're like kinda oh. if you've seen like the wild one and with Marlon Brando, those big big bars that they have on those Bonnevilles back in the day. That's kinda like the oh, style. Right, right. They give you lots of leverage. Yeah, they do. They're really wide and they're like pretty tall up, so I mean it helps a lot. So maybe that, I don't know, maybe that helps me out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if they're taller, I can see that. That's, that was one of the first mods I did to my Tiger was uh, was to put risers on it because uh, standing up on the pegs uh, had me bent over the tank too much. Yeah, you know, anytime you can get leverage, a lot of guys go the Thruxton route. You know, they like to put their bars down really low and... And that's cool and everything like that if you're on the racetrack and you're looking for maybe aerodynamics. But I mean, I want to say everyday rideability and just being able to handle the bike better. It's all about you got to go wide and, and tall. I don't, that's me. Yep, I dig. Oh, dude, you won't even believe what I'm looking at. What are you looking at I've right got now? I've got an 18-wheeler backing up into the intersection, blocking traffic, and on top of it looks like a, I don't even know if they made them that year, like a 1957 Ford Ranchero. Oh, what heck. the heck is that? That's got to be a hack job, dude. <laughs> You're going to have to tune into the video to see that. Um, that was <laughs> <Yeah>. weird. <laughs> nice. Hey, uh, what editing software do you use? I use uh, Sony Vegas Movie Studio. Yeah. I'm using the... Uh, the version 11 because I guess uh, the version 12 and the version 13 that are out there were were really designed more for the the touchscreen computers so they involve a couple of extra steps in editing so I've been so I've been reading on the forums uh, whereas mine is uh, mouse oriented so I kind of stick with that I haven't just I haven't been trying to edit any 4k videos yet so it, it doesn't really slow me down at all what is that what you're using I'm using a Final Cut Pro. Say again there, I lost you for a second. Woo! Final, oh, sorry, Final man. Final Cut I, Pro? Yeah, I'm using Final Cut Pro. I had to get really sideways on the beach just now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. No, yeah, I use Final Cut Pro. I, my wife has a an iMac, so I just figured, and I started with iMovie, so I just figured it would be appropriate to just, because you use all the same commands, and I already got used to that, and I use, I don't know, that's what I use. Right. That's enough for yeah, me. I've... Well, right on, man. Hey, uh, you got to come out here to California sometime, man, and see some of this stuff out here. It's It's amazing. Uh, well, no, no doubt about it. Uh, the you know, San Diego is a popular vacation for people from uh, Southern Arizona to get to see a little bit of water. Heck yeah, man! Like just the beach and everything like that. I don't know what's going on here. I don't come to the beach, and I live probably like I don't know. I live like thirty or forty miles from the beach, not too far, but I don't come out here often. And they're like the waves are going off, and there's so many people with cameras just filming the waves <laughs> out here right now. I got this guy. He's just uh, like. He, he, like filming the cameras or something like or filming with camera it's weird i don't know that's funny yeah no i stayed at the bahia resort before and took my family to sea world stuff like that yeah that's a whole that's a really cool area mission bay yeah mission uh mission bay and mission beach that's that's been the primary areas that we've hit yeah and uh, old town or gaslight district is that what it's called uh yeah ga the gas lamp that's like right by petco park where the padres play Yep, yep. Been all throughout down there, and then down to the pier, we had some uh, seafood at this really awesome place. Like, you're sitting over top of the water, eating. That place was pretty cool. Where was that at? Where was that at? That was right there, right there on the on the pier. You could see all the navy ships and everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. I'm trying to think. Uh, dang, dang. Yeah, that sound. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know where it is. Oh no, no. I know what you're talking about. That's by um, like Pacific Beach area. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, I think. 
Yeah, it was near downtown. Like you had downtown right behind you, and then you had the Navy boats and stuff out to the uh, out to the open ocean. And then there was a really cool cigar store right next door there. So that's why I remember it. <laughs> ah, there you go, cigar aficionado. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So, do you live close to any mountains? Any mountains? Yeah, like like mountainous areas where like my snow. Oh yeah, no. It, it, watch my last vlog, bro. Way up at the top, I, I'm right at the foot of the uh, Catalina, Santa Catalina Mountains. Okay, we cool. We got Mount Lemon up there. That's that's like a, a huge motorcycle attraction during the summer. Oh, right on, right on. Shoot, yeah, I went out. I don't know. I live right next to Palomar Mountain, and I've done a video out there before. But uh, it snowed quite a bit out there, and I tried to go out there while it was snowing. Oh, you're nuts. And, yeah, I, like, froze my ass off, dude. I mean, my hands were so... I was warming them up on my valve cover, but it was just... <laughs> right? <laughs> and it was horrible. But the thing about Palomar Mountain, there's a dirt road called Nate Harrison Grade, and it goes from the bottom to the top of Palomar Mountain, and it's all dirt. Oh, wow. So dirt in the snow, I tried doing it. I had to turn around. I couldn't do it, honestly. It, I'm... <laughs> I sound like a wimp, but I'll, I'll give you one more, too. My wife was on the back. Uh, well, you know what, dude? You don't sound like a wimp to me because I wouldn't have tried it, uh, especially not on a Bonneville. <laughs> dude, dude, it, was, it was pretty rugged, man. I'm, like, beating the heck out of my bike too much, I think. Hey, you know what? You, you knock 20 years off my age and give me an old CRF 250, and, and I'll wiggle up the backside of that mountain. <laughs> it's, it's funny that you say that because over here, they've got a paved highway. Catalina Highway goes all the way up to the top, and that is about 23 miles or 24 miles of nothing but twisty hairpin turns, climbing and dropping. And that's where all the motorcycles love to get into it. But on the backside of Mount Lemon, when you're coming down from Winter Haven and Ski Valley, because they got a little ski resort up there. Shoot, uh, man! When you come down the back, the backside is all dirt, dude. Oh, and that'd it's be just nothing but fire roads and switchbacks. See, I want to take my bike on something a little tighter, like some switchbacks or like single track area. Yeah, yeah. Where if you see someone coming, you need to pull over and let them get through the switchback first. Yeah, I believe that. No kidding. Right on, man. Hey, uh, how many miles are on your on that Bonneville that you're riding? Ooh, it's right at a thousand, dude. This thing's still a baby. Oh, that thing's a baby. I'm at. I'm looking at my odometer right now. I'm at nine nine six two. Almost, almost ten thousand. Wow, no, this thing's got like nine or nine hundred and ninety miles on it when I started this morning. <laughs> Dang, man. This thing's still a baby, dude. I I just got this from my wife back in uh, October. And it's a 2014? Uh, 2015. My Tiger is a 2014. Ah, right, right. So, yeah, that's the last year model then, I think. Of, yeah, the, this yeah, particular that... Bonneville, I guess now it's called the Street Twin or something like that. Yeah, the street twin, but there's, a, I don't know, man. There's like a couple things that I, I'm unsure about. Well, so I think the street twin is, uh, is you know, it's the mag wheel, 17 inch mag wheels. Uh, the difference is it's an air cooled 865 instead of the, uh, or excuse me, a water cooled 865 instead of the air cooled. And they changed the firing order. It's not three, it's not 360 anymore, it's 270. Yeah. Which gives it a little bit more, gives it a little bit more rumble, and it, uh, it, you know, as far as the the sound of the exhaust, and it moved the torque down a little bit lower, but it doesn't have that same smooth sound. Yeah, that British twin sound. That's what I'm all about. I like that like classic British twin kind of sound. Yeah, I don't think any of the new, uh, I don't think any of the new ones have the 360 degree firing order. I think you're right. Only the T. The T100 is the only one that does. Now, this might sound silly, but I was going to get a scrambler. And the reason I didn't get a scrambler is because of the firing order. If that sounds weird, but I mean, it sounds like something stupid to buy a bike over, but I do, I wanted no, the classic British twin sound. That's what it is. Right, so that Honda that I uh, that I got rid of, it, it it had a 270 degree firing order, so I know exactly what that sounds like on the little, uh, you know, parallel twin. And it, it sounded gnarly, it sounded cool, but it did not sound like a British bike. 
Yeah, I want to say it's more like rhythmic, maybe? Like, more like a V-twin kind of Harley kind of rhythm? A little closer to that. It's a little smoother. It wasn't quite as lumpy, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. And whereas this right here is just so butter smooth, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it is, but I don't know, man. That's the thing about British bikes. I think they're kind of pieces of crap, and that's what makes them so great. <laughs> yep, I agree. I agree. <laughs> well, if uh, if it warms up your heart any, uh, Royal Enfield in 2017 or 2018 is supposed to come out with a parallel twin again. I think they're going to recreate the Royal Enfield Meteor. Dang, man. It's, you're you're it's definitely a, a you're an Enfield fan, that's for sure. Oh, there's no doubt, bro. That that those bikes won my heart, man. That those bikes are just the shit. And <laughs> you know what? They don't get you anywhere fast and or anything like that, but they're really they're really cool, you know. They got the British heritage, but they've got the Indian spirit, and I kind of dig all of that. Yeah, I can appreciate that. I can definitely appreciate that. You, I think you put it the best I've heard it so far is it's like riding a time machine. Oh yeah, it is. That's awesome. I it dig is. that. All right, brother. It's been nice talking to you. Dude, this, and, uh, this worked out what, good. I'll get home and I'll, all right, man, have fun and ride safe, all right? You too. Be safe. Bye. You too. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Filtering, filtering, filtering along. <laughs> Sorry. What? I was doing a little bit of illegal filtering or lane splitting. Uh oh. Oh, yeah. You're not allowed to do that there. Dude, I subscribed to Cap Captain Rebunctious.